Okay. Okay, this is the uh, November 13th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, I want to mention that uh, Frontier Community Access Television is taping this meeting for future viewing by the public and our residents. Um, first item on the agenda, minutes for the October 30th meeting. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yep. That's good. Good. Any changes, additions? No. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for October 30. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $73,955, a payroll warrant for $104,078, and a payroll deduction warrant of $27,223. Make a motion we approve those warrants. Second. Sure. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda meetings attended by select board members. Bob? So am I up first here? You're up yeah. first. Okay, so I have, a, I have a long list here. Okay. It was a, it was a busy couple of weeks. Um, so we all went to the special town meetings. Thanks. That was after our last select board meeting. And then. Uh, Later that week, I went to a two-day emergency management conference that was at, at Worcester. It was, it, it was interesting after the class that we all took about emergency management and a little bit of the same kind of talk, but interesting speakers. They had, they had a, a, a woman who is, um, uh, anyway, they, they had a bunch of interesting speakers and, and uh, they were worthwhile. Um, and they, we had some, then we had breakout sessions, one of which had to do with dealing with debris, which would have been a good one for us all to know more about. And one of the speakers who was there was from the veterans group who came here and helped clean up. And, uh, and I enjoyed- Team Rubicon. The, the team Rubicon. I enjoyed talking with him afterwards and I thanked him for what a, what a great job he did. And, uh, and a lot of people there seemed interested. They didn't know about Team Rubicon. But there were many towns there talking about how they handled debris, and you know, if you're the town of Framingham, you know, you have to deal with debris really differently than we did. Yeah. You know, the, you know, a hundred acres of property just to move all of the debris to. Yeah. Uh, and they, then they've been on the news lately for Puerto Rico. They've been down in Puerto Rico. Yeah, Up Team Rubicon. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then. Uh, I, I went. I went to a meeting that I don't know whether it's official meeting that, like, for the select board. But but I went to a meeting given that that, that Matthew Beaton chaired, that oh, was okay. called the transportation listening session, uh, put on by Stan Rosenberg and the Senate. Although it they changed it a bit so that it wasn't. Uh, it, there, there weren't senators there who listened to people give testimony, which is the way, you know, the way we did it here in Conway. Um, and, and it was more little discussions at various tables and then people reporting about their discussions. Um, and, it, and it was about all kinds of things having to do with transportation. Um, you know, expanding bus routes and and uh, and a lot about expanding the east-west transportation. There's just such poor transportation uh, to to get to Boston and the need for high-speed rail. And there was a lot about electric vehicles. And mm -hmm. and uh, but it wasn't it wasn't the focus of it wasn't climate change. It was all of the various transportation needs that, that Governor Baker would like to be working on. Mm -hmm. And I do think the Senate is. It's really interested in it in working on all this, so it was good. And that was down at UMass, and uh, and then I went to a meeting that we've I've been to before uh, called the Small Town Summit, and Beth Bandy, who's the chair of the Charlemont Select Board, has been organizing this. And and the other day we came out with a Commonwealth um, uh, having to do with business. So they're trying to expand it into businesses. And it, but this was largely Beth trying to get this started again. It hasn't met for a long time. I would say there was three times as many people there um, and a couple political groups, I think, trying to, trying to use the meeting for their purposes. And so uh, hopefully that won't happen again. But uh, you know, but 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 it, it's a great meeting among people. You know, there was maybe 15 people from the town of Williamsburg who came, <laughs> and uh, and so 
the, so anyway, but but the, the hottest issue there is always broadband, and 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 for all of the towns that don't have broadband at all, and the one thing that was the most interesting to me about broadband was uh, uh, the the town of Goshen had an offer from Comcast to come in and wire Goshen at no expense to the town. Like, you know, like we have here in Conway, mm -hmm. to 96%. Mm -hmm. And they turned it down. And they're now looking at the difficulty of getting their pittance from the state and what it's going to cost them to wire it to get their own high-speed internet. And maybe thinking maybe that was the wrong decision. So, mm -hmm. So and, and and I you know as much as we you, you know you hear about Comcast I do think we are very fortunate to have Comcast serving Conway and that we're not looking at a million dollar or a million and a half dollar mm -hmm. bill that we would have to pay to build our own Comcast so that was my week we can have busy week <laughs> yeah Here's, always we home at all <laughs> no, no not much <laughs> well I didn't have any means but I would like to. Uh, repeat my uh, story a couple of months or two ago when I was at the uh, Frank County Regional Transit Authority meeting that starting this week the buses have been rolling into town from FRTA to transport anybody that is a veteran or a drug rehabilitation in a drug rehabilitation program. They've gotten this hundred thousand dollar grant mm. and I see the buses have been in town this week every day uh, for anybody that needs a ride to Greenfield area for their their, their treatments or their uh, uh, meetings to the vets and stuff like that. So it's for Auckland, Shovel Falls, Asheville, and Conway. And I see them sitting out here by the uh, mm. front of the library. So they're coming just for that reason? Just for that reason. Anybody can sign up and get a free ride. To but anybody to can go on the bus. Well, and because it's here. Or, oh, uh, just not anybody. Right? It's a special grant that was granted by the federal government to them. Because one of the things that came up in the transportation meeting were people in towns who used to take the bus to get to work, and mm -hmm. and FERTA and PVTA, the, both of those buses, mm -hmm. have had big cutbacks on what the state is giving them to help run them, mm -hmm. and so they've cut way back on their bus routes. And many people who used to take public transportation, take the FERTA buses to get to work, now can't. Mm -hmm. and, and so many of those people came to this the Senate listening session t to talk about that. So, uh, yeah. they, 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 like I said, the buses are, well, I haven't seen any writer yet. I didn't sit there and watch the bus how long you stood there. But, hmm. And it's in today's paper, if you notice, uh, I think it's in a letter to the editor, maybe, or someone on that editor's page. Mm -hmm. There's a big article about it and the buses that are available for it. Okay, great. Okay, let's see. Uh, on Thursday the 2nd, I was at the Massachusetts Leadership Forum all day in Boston. Very interesting uh, conference with uh, a bunch of good speakers and breakout sessions uh, on municipal government. Very, very worthwhile day. Um, on the 6th, I was at the Mass Energy Consumers Alliance 35th anniversary meeting, uh, which was held in the old Federal Reserve Building in Boston. Very interesting building. Yeah. Um, and as you know, they are pushing for uh, more renewable energy to be put into the, uh, the RPS requirement, the Renewable Portfolio Standard. Um, they're looking to, to push the bill that is going to up that by 2% as of 2020. So they're advocating for that. They also had a demonstration of electric vehicles which was very interesting. Did you get to drive any? Um, I, I just watched, <laughs> you know. I know a couple of people that have them, so I have driven them. They're very interesting. When um, we went down to the transportation listening session, sorry to butt in here, um, a number of people in Conway wanted to go, and so we all carpooled down to the meeting in Jack Lockhead's electric car, oh. <laughs> and, 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 and that was fun. Uh, okay. he, he, he didn't demonstrate ludicrous mode in his Tesla, but, okay. but uh, <laughs> the car goes very fast, and, and all of the way back, Almost the whole way back, yeah. he took his hand off the wheel, yeah. and the car made turns and and drove itself. And it was like, oh, oh, yeah? <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. I'd be yep. right there to grab it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And, and the car reminds you, you have to touch the wheel now and then to make sure you're paying attention. Okay. 
And then last <coughs> Thursday, we had a meeting of the Conway <coughs> Finance Board uh, that, that uh, Tom put together that was extremely well done. And uh, we got a lot of good information out and a lot of, a lot of sharing mm. of uh, things to do moving forward with the budget. Uh, that's it for me. Okay, next item on the agenda is citizens' concerns. Do we have any citizens' concerns? Linda. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to read because I didn't, I want to be succinct and cover my points. Um, I'm here tonight to lodge a protest regarding the inappropriate use of the table in motion, as well as to seek a remedy to the premature killing of the safe community bylaw at the special town meeting on October 30th. <clears throat> Through research and consultation, I've learned that the way the table motion was used and tabulated was both inappropriate and incorrect for the following reasons. The definition of tabling is to interrupt pending business so as to permit something else immediately. That was not the case at the meeting. Thus, it was out of order, as evidently there was no other matter requiring immediate attention. Uh, and I'm quoting um, these uh, statements from Robert's Rules. Quote, their, evi their evident object is not to suppress without debate the items laid on the table, but instead to advance consideration on something they considered more urgent. Robert's Rule also states, such action violates the rights of the minority and individual members if it is used for any other purpose. It is out of order to kill or avoid dealing with a measure. It was apparent End of quote. It was apparent that that was exactly the goal of Chief Wimet in immediately tabling the motion after he gave his statement. Again, I quote, the motion to lay on the table is incorrectly used and wrongly admitted with the intention of suppressing a question without debate. It is a violation of the basic principle of general parliamentary procedure law that only a two-third majority vote can rightfully suppress a main question without a line free debate. According to Meeting Time, a handbook of parliamentary law, which is the book that um, moderators use, um, a two-third majority is indeed required. As you know, a close majority vote of 59 to 56 killed the motion. We've spoken to Nick Filler. He agrees that a mistake was made and the vote should have been a two-third majority. We respect Nick's integrity as the moderator and accept that it was a human error. I'm not coming tonight to debate the merits of the bylaw. That should have happened at our town meeting. I would have left the meeting disappointed had the bylaw failed, but accepted the voice of the citizens. However, instead I left feeling that here at town meeting, where the purest form of democracy is practiced, our voices were silenced. I also feel that the town officials use their positions of power to speak strongly against the measure and then thwart the citizens' right to question or counter their statements. That is just wrong and certainly not in the spirit of democratic discourse and debate. I've heard from people on both sides of this issue that were not happy that the debate was stifled. Controversial subjects will always come forward the answer is not to try to ban them from discussion, but instead to trust in our democracy and come prepared to express our opinions in a respectful and informed manner. That is my goal, and I hope that that is what will take place at our annual town meeting this spring. In conclusion, I'm asking that the town officials examine this incident and make the necessary adjustments to ensure the running of a fair and democratic town meeting in the future. Debate and discourse should be encouraged, not suppressed, by misuse of parliamentary procedure. And also, as a remedy to these unfortunate events, I'm asking that the select board vote to make this an article on the warrant for the next annual town meeting. Okay, you, you talked to Nick? Yes. Okay, okay. Nick, Nick's in charge of the town meeting. Okay. So if he, if he made a mistake, then, you know, he's, he's admitted that mistake. Okay. Uh, the town meeting, if, if you want something to come up at the annual town meeting, you have to go through the process of presenting uh, your petition to citizens, have them sign it, and 
than put her on the warrant. Well, I also understand that the select board could put this on. It has to go through the process. You, you could not, the select board could not vote to put this on, seeing that no. there were mistakes made and there was it, an inappropriate it's a separate, it's a, use. It's a separate issue. Well, the next, no, but next they, they, they could, it's a, they it's could a, submit it's a, it. It's a, it's a separate issue. No, we could resubmit it, but I'm, yeah. I thought, and I may be incorrect, that also the select board could vote to have this put on. The, the town clerk, whenever a citizen's petition comes up, the town clerk has to verify the signatures to put that petition on mm -hmm. and has to report that to the state. Well, we, but, have, we have nothing to do with that. So you're saying that we have to get 100 signatures no, again? No, no, no. Just no 10. There's, there's 10 signatures okay. required for annual town meeting. But meetings. I think what Linda is saying is we're, a, we're asking because the select board has a right to put any anything to make anything an article on the warrant. So we'll, let let me finish. So I think what Linda's saying is we are asking that this not be a citizen. I mean, I hear you saying no, but we're asking you that it, it not be a citizen p petition, and that you, as a select board, I would think would need to talk about this and decide mm -hmm. what you know. Given what happened, that what happened was incorrect and unlawful. That, you know, we're just asking that when maybe it would be a nice thing to do to, for you to put it on. That that's right. But if that's not the case, obviously we can we get will. the we yeah. can get the ten signatures. But it wasn't just that the two thirds was wrong. You know, I feel that it was just the whole thing was inappropriate and not the way. And it was also done in a way to suppress people's voices. It was done so that people wouldn't discuss this. And that's just not right. If, if you look at the tape, okay, I did. Nick, I'm not, I was okay. there. <laughs> okay, and Nick, Nick said, okay, if a motion is tabled, it can be brought off of table later on in the meeting. That was the last um, thing on the meeting. When could it have been? It was the very last thing. Somebody Anymore? could have brought it up right after the vote to so table. So as soon as people tabled it, we're supposed to raise their hand and say, let's vote it, again? You could. My it that's doesn't exactly, matter, that's though. Exactly that does, that's two separate issues, yeah. whether or not it was misused it wasn't and whether or not we could bring it back up. I think that's a separate issue. Peter? My understanding is that in order for a, a, an article to be brought before, if it's tabled, to be brought back, it has to be brought up by someone on the side that, that won. Or lost. You said that in the past. Or won. I mean, it, it's. In fact, it's two members two. on the winning side. And and and, and, right. and, to, and to step and to step back, what I hear both these people asking is that the select board take take it upon themselves to make it not a citizen's positions, but for the select board to understand that it's an important issue that was inappropriately handed handled at the town meeting, and that they might consider making it a, 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 a warrant that comes from the select board and not from the citizens because you already have well over 100 citizens putting it on once. So you know the support is there for it. Um, so that, that's what I'm understanding that, the, that, yeah, they're, yeah. that they're asking. And I would, I would add that there are three selectmen here and we're hearing from one. one. So in the democratic process, the majority rules. I would like you guys to take a we, vote on this. We have, we have not opened the warrant yet for the annual town meeting. Yeah. When the warrant is open, we could discuss right, that. Right, right. exactly. Right. That's all we're asking. Or we may have another special. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, we don't know. Yeah. Well, I guess my other issue, too, is in we, I, we have heard from other people who said this has happened in the past. I can't recall it. Um, but the fact that someone would try to shut down a discussion and discourse over a petition that was brought by the citizens is really not right, and I think that needs to be looked at. I've been at many, many town meetings over my life, both as a citizen and as a superintendent of schools, attending lots and lots of towns. I've never seen the table motion used like this. It's usually, we don't have enough information, let's table it till we get it. We're not going to be able to get our business done, let's table it. It's not table it to kill the motion. And I think that needs to be looked at in our town because that is not the democratic process that well, I know. Well, again, it's, it's the moderator's place to run the meeting. And if he thinks there was something wrong with that procedure, then he'll correct it next time around. Mm -hmm. okay. it was, and, and, and everything that I sat through and before the meetings and everything else, it was not the intention of the Board of Selectmen to have that killed. That was strictly oh, what no, Mr. Mr. Wimatt did. We was no, I hope no you know, conspiracy on that. our part. No, no, I'm not saying None that. of that, because uh, we never discussed it. No. That's good to know. 
No, and well, I'm not, and, I'm, and I didn't that. say that, and I don't. Say I, I talked to Nick tonight just to get, you know, to tell him that we were going to talk about this, but, and and to find out what he would recommend. And mm -hmm. one of the things he recommended is if that he, he wishes that he did what he usually does, which is to use town meeting time mm -hmm. as the rules instead of Robert's rules of order, mm -hmm. and that he had he had moderated a meeting down in Shelburne Falls just before the well, week before this and in his pocket he still had the Robert's Rules of Order and so he used them mm -hmm. but he said normally he uses town meeting time and in town meeting time it's a two-thirds majority to table for any reason at all Robert's Rules of Order goes through situations that are right. majority and situations that are two-thirds and then it's up to the moderator to determine how it's being used and Nick you know, Nick's a little uncomfortable with that, that, mm -hmm. that he likes town meeting time where it just says two-thirds. Well, even, even using Robert's rules, you're right, it, it sometimes is a majority, and that's probably when it's, let's just put it off till we get to something else. Right. Um, but it, Robert's rule even says if it's the, if, if it's, if it's the in, intent is to kill the motion, then it should be a two-thirds majority. So in our bylaws, in Robert's rule, the bylaws in, of Conway are silent on what rules we should use. Mm -hmm. And so, so Nick's advice is if we would like to use town meeting time, we should change our bylaws to say, and, other, and many other towns do this, mm -hmm. that we use town meeting time and not What's Robert's the process rule. for changing the bylaws? So, so I'm, I was hoping that that's what we would find out tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a town meeting vote. What's the process for initiating that? A warrant article. Is that something that the, that the select board would feel comfortable putting on the, the warrant for this upcoming town meeting? I, I, I think that, that um, Nick is moderator. If he decides moving forward that he wants to use town meeting time, he can do that. We don't, we may not have we don't the same moderator. need an article. We may not have the same moderator. So I would strongly suggest, this is a, this is a very important issue yeah. to many of the people here. I would strongly suggest that this be a bylaw um, that it be put on the town meeting warrant. And if the select board doesn't feel suitable, you know, doesn't feel you know, to accommodate to do that, then we could also provide a petition. It would simply be a matter of getting 10 more signatures. But given the circumstances, it seems like a small matter that the, the select board could do would, on their own. I'd like to see Nick come and give us his... Uh, sure. And I'm sure he would. Do that. I'm sure he would. Yeah, Nick, Nick and, and, and you know, I've been to many town meetings, and some are, some are run by town meeting time, some are run by Robert's Rules of Order, and some are run by uh, their own made-up rules in, in towns, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, there doesn't seem to be a, a strict standard either way, and I would I would say I've seen a third, a third, and a third where where towns are Robert's rules, town meeting time, and then their own version of both of those. Uh, and I think essentially what we've used over the, over uh, from what I've seen is basically what Nick has followed, mm -hmm. and. Um, Again, uh, as you say, sometimes Robert's rules to table are majority, and sometimes it's two thirds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, perhaps if we clarify that with Nick and use one way or the other, okay, that would be the best way to go. I think you know, Nelson's point is well taken, though, to codify it so that it's that it's well, clear well then, to everybody then which one to use, and you put, can talk to put talk an oracle on the warrant. Right. Sure. Okay, I have a statement too, as part of the citizens' concerns. Sure. Is that for you? Oh, I'm done. done. No, I'm done. And thank you for listening and oh, responding. You're welcome. Point well taken. Okay. Although I was out of town when the special town meeting took place, I watched the video. I was on the committee that sponsored the Safe Community Bylaw, and one of the two people to whom Chief Wimet referred when mentioning the meeting with him in his office, Nelson and I, and there was a third person I'll refer to, met with him. In addition to my sadness and disappointment as to what took place at the meeting, I'm left with a huge why. Why would Chief Wimet say that the two committee members he met with looked at each other, we were taking a second to see who wanted to speak first, and only said, I feel like we have to do something. When we spent close to an hour with him, along with Jeff Napolitano, an expert on this issue, explaining all the reasons this makes sense and responding to all of his concerns, why would 
can mention the issue of the cost of imprisoning folks. When we did not bring up this issue, he did. And we pointed out that it was a non-issue in terms of this bylaw. Why would our select board member, John O'Rourke, use what I deem to be scare tactics and inflammatory language in reference to this motion when there's nothing about this bylaw that invites criminals, gang members, drug dealers, terrorists to our town or stands in the way of arresting and prosecuting them? Why would there be such intense opposition to a bylaw that prevents Conway, that simply prevents Conway police from honoring non-criminal civil immigration detainer requests and town employees from acting as immigration officers? In fact, Chief Lamette stated when we met with him in his office, and I heard that he also said this after a special town meeting, that the bylaw, what we're asking for in the bylaw is his current practice. He stated that. He, we don't need it because that's what we do anyway. Why would many town folks have been, according to Chief Wimbet, calling him and stopping him on the street to express their opposition? I can readily understand why they don't feel this bylaw is necessary in Conway or are opposed to it. But why the virulent opposition? Here are some of the reasons for this bylaw that we presented to Chief Wimbet at our meeting. The federal government is rounding up undocumented immigrants, and a reminder that it's not a criminal offense to be in this country illegally. Lacking enough agents to do this work, they are asking local law enforcement to do, to do it for them. Federal courts have ruled that requiring communities to enforce federal civil immigration detainers is unconstitutional. Immigrants are justifiably afraid to make their presence known in this environment. If they witness crimes, they're afraid to contact police. Police chiefs in Amherst, Greenfield, East Hampton, Northampton, and Holyoke, as well as, as uh, nationwide, have all expressed support of these policies. Our expert, Jeff Napolitano, spoke to the issue of losing federal funds or equipment due to passing this bylaw, which is something Kenny mentioned, and explain why this is a non-issue based on law and precedent. Chief Wumet spoke about the bylaw creating division in our community. I would suggest that possibly it was Chief Wumet who brought about this divisiveness by cutting off what could have been an educational and respectful discussion. As a town, we have weathered issues that have divided us before. And, and I have to say that I, I hate that when we're divided. I really want us to work together, and I feel that we can. I'm not, I wouldn't do anything that promote, promoted divisiveness, um, unless I, you know, that's why I'm speaking out, unless I feel like I have to. We've always emerged to work together in spite of differences of opinions. I sincerely hope we can do that, that we can continue to do this. And I do love this town. And, you know, I, I'm seriously, sincerely interested in understanding this intense opposition. And, and um, you know, so that's my statement. That's what I need to make. Thank you, Phil. Okay. My hope would be that by the discussion that we didn't have, we would have gained some of that understanding. Yeah. Perhaps it will happen in the spring. And maybe it will, and hopefully it will in the mm -hmm. spring. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe, you know, maybe before the spring or before this comes up, I mean, maybe in some ways this is a, you know, will, will result in hearing from more people on both sides of the issue. Yeah, and I hope, I hope as we go, as we walk in town together and we see each other at the post office or a baker's store or wherever it is that we run into each other, we can, we can have a conversation or talk about it or at least acknowledge that we have different, we have differences, mm -hmm. I have but it's not going it, 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 to, it's not going to tear us apart. Right. I don't know if anyone wants that's to the ultimate goal. Yeah, yeah that's the ultimate goal. Because we all, we all love this town and we all live here and there's mm -hmm. 2,000 people and right. we need to be able to work and live and We sports. all know we all have our battles and we yeah, win some right. and we lose some. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. But we I mean, all go live. Kenny's our plumber, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. He wears different I won't tell you how many battles I've had on Tommy and Floyd. I like the way the loser. Yeah, okay. many. Yeah. 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 we heard that. Yeah. Yeah.
copy. If anyone else wants a copy, I do have more. It's I'm, I'm considering sending this to the recorder. I, I well, right there, give it to Andy. Well, I, I might, um, <laughs> I might um, change the first paragraph yeah, just to introduce it a little easier. more. Yeah. But I can give this to you now if, okay. you, if you think it makes sense to people. Linda, do you have a copy there. for Lisa? I, I did. Yes, okay. Okay. He has an Thanks. email address, too. He's <laughs> a business card, I'm sure. And, I do. Yeah. No, and I, I also want to reiterate that um, none of us want the divisiveness. Yeah. You know, I have, right. my whole life, I've always believed that we should be able to disagree and have debate and walk out and still be neighbors and friends. And that's my goal. That's I my feel goal. the same okay. way. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Okay, next item on the agenda, we have uh, to sign the memorandum of agreement with FERCOG regarding municipal vulnerability preparedness. And this was uh, something that we wrote a joint letter in support of back with the uh, town of Ashfield. This, it's a very small grant, but it will give us the tools that we need to apply for future grants um, related to hazard mitigation. Um, we will um, identify strengths and weaknesses uh, with respect to climate change and rank the issues and develop a list of top priorities for implementation. Um, so this is a planning grant. Uh, it's not an implementation or a project grant, um, but, uh, and it would involve a lot of public outreach. I mm -hmm. think you got my, and through my email message, uh, a lot of public outreach. And so just uh, the final process before, uh, before we actually start working on it. Okay. Yeah, and we had, uh, we had sent, uh, uh, we did a letter with uh, Ashfield uh, yep. to approve what they were doing jointly. So this is just an extension of that. So I'll make a motion that we sign the uh, memorandum of understanding between uh, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and the town uh, for work in support of Conway achieving municipal vulnerability preparedness, MVP, the MVP designation for the period of agreement between uh, November 1st, 2017 and June 30th, 2018. Do I have a second? Wait. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Next item on the agenda is to appoint Dave Barton to the personnel uh, the Corey committee. Policy. Yeah, there's the Corey policy. Oh, the Corey policy. Uh, oh. He's old business. Yeah. I almost made it. <laughs> almost, David. Almost, yeah. The Corey <laughs> policy. This be quick. And this is the uh, new Corey policy for the employee handbook, which is the new state policy, which Chief Burnett has reviewed and uh, signed off on for, for Conway. Okay, and, and we had no comments on that all. Yeah, he said it looked okay. Well, yeah, the the last time we looked at this, we wanted the chief um, right. to uh, to look it over. So he doesn't have any adverse comments on it. No, he's in agreement with yes. it. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion that, uh, based on our review by the police chief, that we approve the new Corey policy. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Would one? Could you make sure that all department heads get copies of that? Mm-hmm. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Right, next item on the agenda uh, is to sign letters of support of legislation, the legislative revision of the sh public shade tree law. All right, we've got we've got two uh, two letters, one to Representative Kulik and one to Senator Hines. And our tree warden is recommending this. Come ahead. 
well-known political activist. That's me. Yeah. Rabble Rouser. Rabble Rouser. Cat yeah. rescuer. <laughs> you do, do you happen to have a copy of the, bio, of the laws, the way they were written now? The way they're written now, I don't have. I have the um, proposed changes. Uh, and I have to admit, I don't fully understand what I'm talking about here. Because the uh, website says, well, we want to update this thing to make it current. And uh, it. Uh, New pen. Glasses. New pair of glasses. I got it. Um, and it refers to the present law talking about trees being damaged by horses. So they think it ought to include automobiles. It's a pretty old. <laughs> so it's a very old. Apparently. It's very old. Yeah. However, in the House and Senate bills, I don't see where it talks about cars in addition to horses. So um, I'm a little bit confused. However, I don't think this means a whole lot to come. I think that be, because the current law and the new law uh, requires very little of towns under 10,000 population. Mm -hmm. um, under the new law, a tree warden will uh, have to be, have to take a course. Uh, the 1999 law said that while the, that the law does not apply to munis municipalities under 10,000. However, the committee recommends that the tree warden be a certified arborist and have three years of supervisory experience, but it's not required. I don't meet <laughs> that requirement. We would probably have, have a hard time. time. And you, can, <laughs> you can fire me if you want. <laughs> However, uh, it's not that easy. <laughs> you haven't paid me yet. So don't worry. Um, I think that the law, though, is good in that it will have bigger towns and cities paying more attention to the qualification, qualifications of the tree warden and training. And we'll have some laws that will uh, protect trees in these bigger towns. For us, I think if we write in support of this, we do it because we think um, it's generally a good idea for Massachusetts. We, we do this as Massachusetts citizens. As Conway citizens, I don't think we really care. If the law passes, I will probably be grandfathered, though it doesn't specifically say that. The old law that was updated in 1999, grandfathered, mm -hmm. um, and if not, the requirement is something that I think is a good idea anyway. They have a six-part course, they being the Tree Wardens Association. Which is where the impetus for this came from, the right. Tree, tree okay. Wardens Association. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And so um, the course... Can you be willing to do this? I'm willing to do it. I was thinking of doing it anyway. It's six days on six different months, you have to travel to Acton or somewhere around there. And that's the biggest pain in the ass of the thing. But, uh, but it, the, the things that they address, I think, are interesting and important, and Conway could benefit from them. Can they actually teach you anything, Walter, at this course? At this point in my life? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you generally favor the law and do you recommend it? I favor the law, I recommend it, okay. and I think our supporting it, as I said, as Massachusetts citizens is a good idea. Okay. And um, Tom has drafted a letter. Based on the template supplied by the Tree right. Wardens Association. Okay. I would like to have a copy to review before I vote. I'd like to see the existing law, too. Oh, the law. Of the law yeah. and the proposal. Okay, here, right. here is the proposal. That's the way I am. I mean, Here's the on. proposal. Here is the background on the revisions. Okay. Here is the training course, which next time it's full, and it can't be. <laughs> I would have had to uh, sign up before October, and it was full, so I can't do it. They have not announced when there's another one, and they 
nowhere on the website could I see what it cost if anything. But this is the um, well, you don't want this now. Can I make a copy yeah, of those copy before you take them away, and I'll, I'll email them out to everybody. Well, the early on, you said there isn't much towns under ten thousand have to do, and then later it sounded like there was nothing. Towns in that was in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, the proposed revision on these two bills does say one thing, and that is that the tree ward can take the qualification course. Oh, okay. I see. That's all we will have to do in the future. I'm not even sure they have to do it for me. But I think it would be a good idea. Because you might be grandfathered. That's right. Yeah. I but I think it might be good for me and good for Conway if I did take this course. We can discuss that some other time. I'll find out when the next thing runs, I'll see what it costs, I'll discuss it with Tom. Yeah, that's, we do that for the budget process, so we'll be setting your yep. budget for the yep. next year and we'll have that conversation then. Okay. Right. My hope is you take the course and you'd actually like it. I mean, it might be... I think I would like the course. It might be interesting. Yeah, I think you would, yeah. And you learn to use this thing called iTree, which is a new uh, series of computer programs that help uh, in risk management. And, I, and many other things, mm -hmm. things that aren't relevant to us, but things that uh, I think bear on liability. Mm. And I would learn to use that software. And I think that's a that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Great, thank Recent, you, Walter. Recently, we did I'll make worry about those too. If you don't mind. Yeah, have the whole thing. Do you have a deadline for signing this? Yeah, I, is this time sensitive? I don't believe so. Okay, then, then we'll, well, we don't know. Uh, I, I, well, they're only in session for another two or three days before they kick it off to oh, okay. January anyway, and I, I haven't right. heard that this was one of the big right. big so, items. Okay, so, we, you got so we have time. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Walter. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll wait until uh, we review the, the law itself, the table, table the signing of these until we do that. Sorry to sneak away, you did Yeah. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll leave it in your uh, mailbox, the original. Uh, no, keep them. Save yourself making a copy because I've got them. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Well, I don't know how I skipped over so many things, but I just want to get David up here quick. Come on, David, you're up now. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to join the personnel committee? Yes, it was an innocent gesture. Uh, and I didn't realize that there were only two members on the committee. So being the third, I find myself in a very Who's on the committee, no? A Sue Fenton and uh, a Bob, Bob Strong. Stone. 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 Stone, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, we, uh, we need members on that committee who are level-headed like yourself. Well, let's just say I, I come with no prejudice. That's great. <laughs> no and, angle of approach. And you're recommended by the committee? Um, uh, there was no objection uh, from one and a hearty welcome from the other. That's, that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. on, on, on those recommendations, I'll um, make a motion that we appoint uh, David Barton as a member of the Personnel Committee to serve for a term ending 6 30 18. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. So it's really interim. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, we and renew all appointments at the end of the, the end, yeah. fiscal And you have year. to come in and get sworn in by... Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You have to get yeah. a yeah. letter from him first, I guess. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Jenny, and you're going to get sworn in by Jenny and... Uh, conflict of interest and all of that. <coughs> yeah. You guys are for all of this. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get your letter. And I'll put the letter in the mail tomorrow. We'll have all the... Thank you. That you need to yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Welcome to the big high pan job in coming. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> well, well, I, I look forward to it. It's it's a whole dimension. I've been on six committees and commissions over the years, and this is new, totally new. And Tom is my teacher. So. Uh, well, and Lisa's my teacher because she's gone through it with a with a fine tooth comb and come up with some questions for uh, people to deal with. That's so. great. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, David. Yeah. Appreciate you coming in. Yeah. Thanks for volunteering. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Before you do that. <laughs> Please don't discourage him. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah.
All right, next item on the agenda is the, um, the State Cultural Council contract for $4,400. Should be the sheet right under that cover sheet. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah, here it is. Yeah. Okay, this is something we do every year. This is yep. our accepting the money for our yeah. cultural council yeah, to be able which, to which use. we do every year. Yep. It's yeah. pro forma. Yep. All right, I'll make a motion that we uh, we approve um, the state cultural council contract for forty four hundred dollars. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Last page here. Um, Is that the contractor authorized signature? Uh, go ahead and, and sign sign that. that. That just makes you the person who gets to sign the contract. So right. That's uh, the That's contract. All, all of contractor authorized signatory listing. That's what that is. Any comes with it comes, comes with every contract yeah sorry I should have had that filled out already that's all right Self-evaluation and transition plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about this a little last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last and, meeting. And this is the final, um, final executive summary. The uh, you may remember seeing the sheets before that included all of the detail work done in this building, the town hall, and the Conway Grammar School. Mm -hmm. And um, based on preliminary discussions with Ron and Ken, um, I think the, the, the item of highest priority is getting an accessible public bathroom right. in town. Yeah. And the one over on the first floor in town hall fits that bill. Mm -hmm. um, if we do that and some related uh, door hardware and mat and door settings work, uh, so far, if we use their figures, that comes up to about thirteen and a half thousand dollars. I'm waiting for final figures. Uh, Ken's working on this for as a as someone who knows what uh, that kind of contracting costs, okay. um, he's working to come up with uh, with costs so that we can we can have a a realistic idea of what we can get done for fifteen thousand dollars. This this would be a, a nine thousand dollar grant matched by the six thousand uh, dollars past the town, town meeting, meeting right. um, submitted on Friday. Yeah. So um, which I will rather this coming Friday. Right. Uh, so that's where this stands. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more work than that to do. We are writing in that this is phase one of a multi-year plan to work on additional things. It would be really great if we could get them to pay for 60% of a lift. Mm -hmm. And I think if we you know, establish ourselves as having done a good job with the first phase, um, we're in good shape to ask for a lot more money for the second phase. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that, all these items that are listed here are, are hope to be completed on the first phase. 
Not all, no, no, only, uh, um, for one thing, this is only for the town hall. Oh, okay. Nothing um, for the town office? Nothing for the town office and nothing for the school at this point. I I did give them a copy of what was what was gotten. It's a it's a more recent building, so there are there are fewer uh, basic items that have to be addressed. But they have a list of them, and they can either do that through their capital yeah. planning or say, or ask us <clears throat> for additional money. Widening these corridors and stuff in here is going to be quite costly. Mm. Yeah, and they pretty much uh, <laughs> write off this building and say that any public functions ought to be done somewhere which is accessible. Yeah. Um, even the, um, the approach to this, the ramp approaching this, uh, they say does not meet current standards. And it's unfortunately not um, unusual for contractors when installing something like this to say, hmm, well, you know, if I just made it a few feet shorter, you wouldn't have to worry about this. But what that does is it, it yeah. makes it yeah. just enough uh, more of a pitch so that it doesn't meet the standard. Mm -hmm. So is the pitch out here that's, uh, that's the, a the, problem? The pitch does not, does not oh. match the standard here. Um, so, Why, you know, that's a long-term consideration. Can I mention something else while we're talking about this? You and I talked, and I talked to Ron about patching these holes out here on the mm. existing ramp the way it is right now. Has he done that? I I'm afraid somebody's going to get in trouble. If somebody like Tom McCarthy tries to come up with yeah. that with a wheelchair, he's going to be in serious trouble. Mm. Yeah. Some of the spaces like that are that wide in some places that he could just drop right in with a wheelchair. I will check for that. Nice. We, we, you and I discussed that about several months ago. I mean, I'll really try to take it some black top or something. Mm -hmm. even, he could even fill a hole as a coal patch, probably in the hole of the hole, you know, some of the bag coal patch. There's cracks in the cement out there, though? Well, it's caved in. The edges yeah. are caved right in. It was just <laughs> washed out underneath it. Oh. Mm -hmm. that, that sort of thing. And it, it's, it's, I mean, that's the only thing we got right now for access to this building. Yeah. We got to try to at least keep that up. Better, better <laughs> yeah, than yeah, that's for sure. All um, right. So we're yeah, gonna, we're going to uh, go over this. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's quite a project, uh, uh, quite a quite a product. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this is just the executive summary. We do have all of the detail sheets if you want to get in and, and look at all of those. It goes into every single doorknob that you have to twist instead of yeah. push and, and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So it's it's really quite complete. Mm -hmm. And they do um, suggest some prioritization. One of their priority things is to put a lift in the other in the other building, right. but I don't think right. we can start with that. I think that's a good second year project uh, if we can get funding for that. Okay. All right, so we're, we're on the way for this, and we can review this uh, uh, at our leisure and discuss it. Yeah, and, and I'm uh, planning to go ahead and submit the grant proposal this Friday, which right. is the deadline, mm -hmm. okay. or a day or two early if I can. That's great. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next item on the agenda is to appoint the Commission on Disability, Tom McCarthy, Robert Rusty Blossom, Ron Sweet, and Tom Hutchison as a non-voting member. And this is necessary in order to apply for the grant as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll make a motion that we approve these um, these individuals to the Commission on Disability for term ending uh, June 30th, uh, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll, I'll just mention uh, that I did uh, contact Henry Mulvey, and he was very interested, but didn't feel um, uh, that at his, uh, you know, starting off with college and such, he was uh, able to take something like this on now. But I'm planning to keep him in the loop, and uh, but, yeah, he please, may uh, he may do. join in the future. Good. Uh, just good. Th this document refers to the ADA coordinator for the town. That would be me. Okay, I, I didn't know who that was. <laughs> so. If, if you don't know, it's Bob Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <yeah. coughs> Human Resources Director. Um, I didn't know if, if Tom or if you know one of these Rusty were volunteers for that. So. Oh. Okay. Next item is to review the timeline, the budget timeline. Yeah, there are two different memos there. 
Um, and one of them has the wrong date on it because it was it's Friday and they didn't send it out on Friday. I figured uh, that, that was the. Uh, yeah. I got this one. I've got one. I got one. Oh, okay. Well, there are. You had two. The, you had the, two last time. The, the, there, there is a separate one for the for the budget worksheet, um, which goes through the instructions for filling out the budget worksheets. Um, uh, this one will be sent out with the capital request form tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I like to send two out because it um, it's just a little emphasis that people need to start paying attention to the mm. to the date um, and and read carefully so that they know what the difference is and uh, actually pay attention to both of them. Um, the The timeline on both of them is the same. Mm -hmm. It's just it's yeah. just copied and pasted. Um, so uh, again, I'll be changing that November 10th to November 14th. Uh, that's that's when things get sent out, and then um, uh, right after that, uh, on the 17th, we send out the budget worksheets, and uh, we give people uh, about a month mm -hmm. to to get the uh, capital requests in. If people don't know they need something, they're not going to figure it out. You know, don't need more than three weeks to figure it out. Um, I have the. Could you uh, turn that on? I have the um, the uh, budget submissions due uh, December twenty second. I'm moving that up a week. Uh, I don't think it does any good to ask people to submit things the last day of the calendar year if they're even around. They uh, mm -hmm. are thinking about other things, <laughs> so I'm going to try to get them to get that done before the. The, uh, the holidays there. Okay. And um, then uh, opening the warrant on January 8th, um, giving two months uh, for discussion of the warrant. We start the Joint Select Board and Finance Committee budget meetings. Um, we have been requesting annual submissions for the last year's town report pretty much ever since uh, July. Um, not too much success in getting of any of those in, of course, but uh, it doesn't hurt to keep asking. Uh, it's a real pain for us in this office to have to work on getting the town report together and the town budget together mm -hmm. at the same time. Yep. So um, it's uh, not, they're two different fiscal years. It's, it, there are yep. confusions that happen. Um, Anyway, we have a deadline for submissions to the town report. Um, it is somewhat of a soft deadline, but the line we took last year was if you don't get it in by then, we may put in the town report that you did not submit a report. Sure. Yeah, um, and we did that for a couple of uh, committees last year. Um, then uh, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee comes in uh, on February 12th and reports on their uh, deliberations, any submissions that they got, what they thought, how they did it, and, and what, you know, what in general capital planning looks like now, now that we have a tool and, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of work that still has to be done in getting that process up and going. The, uh, the review of capital requests is, of course, only one part of the the brief of the Capital Improvements Planning Committee and uh, the actual long-term planning is, in the long run, I think, uh, um, at least as important, if not more important. So uh, I intend to have my budget out a couple of weeks after we hear what those final capital plans are. About the same time I get uh, the school budgets and things like that. It's a very mm -hmm. hectic time for me. Yeah. Um, Warren. The warrant closes on March 12th. That's uh, 60 days, um, or wherever it, it's the closest that it can be, um, uh, before the annual town meeting. Oh yeah, then the school budgets come in. Um, so I'll have preliminary budgets. Uh, mine, mine is a proposed, and everything is in the black. But if there are changes, then that changes, uh, that changes the budget. Um, 
And I, I would caution anybody against saying yes to anyone about anything um, because we have been tight the last couple of years. My budget has been in the black, but just. So that unless things get cut, it's very, it's impossible to add new things. Mm -hmm. So that's <clears throat> just something to keep in mind. Um, and you'll notice that, that things wrap up kind of early. The final budget's completed, draft warrant and motion's completed, March 23rd. That's a long time before May 14th. Mm -hmm. But we need time for legal review. We need time to get the articles and motions in final form. We need the Finance Committee recommendations to be finalized before you even sign the warrant. So mm -hmm. between the time the warrant closes and when you sign it, there's a lot of work that happens and a lot of, sure. a, a lot of detail that gets sorted out there. Um, and then we need to send it to the printer a couple of weeks before we mail it out, and we need to mail it out so that it gets to people a couple of weeks early. Sure. So there's there's at least a uh, a month between when you sign the warrant and the town meeting. The way it works out here, it's a little bit more than a month. Um, that's the only wiggle room we have at that point. It gives us about a week at most yeah. if we need to delay things. So it's still a fairly tight timeline. Um, but it's what we did last year, and it worked out okay. Worked out fine. So the, all these dates uh, match this year's Friday deadlines and mm -hmm. Monday meetings and all that sort of thing. Okay, great. Yeah, so that's the plan went, for this year's budget went process. Very well last year, and, and uh, yeah, it'll it'll do the same this year. Okay, uh, next item. Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Request a proposal from Maya for health care coverage. Yes, um, uh, they have they have requested a formal request from us for a uh, a proposal. Um, we have an idea. This is to compare their plan with the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust plan, which we know is changing. So we have to get uh, we have to make a formal request of Maya for their proposal to. Uh, to be formal to us, to review it, and and then we can start <coughs> comparing comparing the two. Um, we will have questions about it, and this this whole process is going to kick into very active uh, into a very active phase at the worst possible time in January when we're all busy with budget things. Mm -hmm. And there's an extraordinarily detailed procedure that has to be followed in terms of notification of the unions and posting meetings and all that sort of thing. And I have asked town council to um, make sure that that all happens according to the timelines that are that are laid out by the law. Okay. Um, and he has agreed to do that for us. Um, because I know that, that I'm gonna be pulled in many different directions. And this is the kind of thing where if you miss a deadline, the whole process can go out the window. Sure. That said, we have uh, Jan and I have met with the uh, union representative. We're being as open and transparent as possible because it's really best if we see each other on the same team here than on different teams. We know the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust that that their plan is going to change, and the only question is is whether we can get something that's closer to what we have now with. Uh, with their plan, um, or are they still the best game in town? So that's that's what this is meant to do. And I think that Maya will probably offer the the most competitive plan to the Hampshire County Group Insurance they're Trust. They're like a pretty big group, aren't they? They have 120 municipalities. Mm -hmm. The Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust has 70. So they're not quite twice as large, but they, and I bet some of the municipalities they have are considerably larger than the ones in the Hampshire County Group sure. Insurance Trust. Yeah, that's so the, the, Ham they, the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust is very selective at who mm -hmm. they let into their group. Which is one of the reasons they have been able to keep their rates that's, down. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, 
So we'll, uh, we do need the comparison, so, uh, and they've asked us to make a formal request of them for, uh, for a proposal. Do you need a vote on that? Uh, yeah, it's formal. Will we, have a, will we have numbers from Hampshire to compare? Oh, we have. We already have those numbers. They have well, numbers. They're changing. They, they'll, but they're changing. They'll make the final, pro we, we have their draft okay. numbers. Uh -huh. We'll have final and numbers be in, in January. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so you want to make a request of Maya? Yes. Okay. For make a a, I'll make a motion that we uh, request a proposal from Maya for health care coverage. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is your update, Tom. Or not time again. I'm sure, I have something somewhere. Oh yes. Filled with departmental news this time. Oh, one of those goes to uh, Lisa. Um, there was a meeting uh, mentioned by John earlier of the financial team to discuss the new long-range financial plan, the budget memo, and special revenue accounts. This really hasn't uh, met since Rick Bean was driving it earlier, and a lot of that was in order to nail down some of these special revenue accounts. Uh, many of them set up by town meeting that, uh, you know, there's a, a few hundred or sometimes a few thousand dollars left in them, and uh, a lot of those got closed out several years ago and made a tremendous contribution to free cash. Um, we will continue to try to close out unnecessary accounts and identify the origin of them all, uh, though the largest ones have already been closed, and so the contribution to free cash will not be what it has sometimes been historically. Uh, I have filed a new cutting plan for the rear of the Fournier lot with the service forester for the state, uh, where there are still a number of downed trees from the tornado. The idea is to clear the trail and remove any threats to those on the trail. Uh, we'll probably leave a lot of downed trees down. We'll probably move some of the cut trees just to the side of the path. Um, the idea to being not to disturb the trail more than we have to in bringing things in and out. Mm -hmm. So uh, that process has been started. So we did complete the first process just to. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in the front of the Fournier land. Now we're doing the same thing in the back of the land. Uh, as a follow-up to the brief and low-level issue of lead at the Conway Grammar School uh, in one of their drinking fountains, we have received instructions for an enhanced testing regime as well as a few other training and maintenance items. DEP communicated to the town about this, not the school, so I have let them know and work with the water quality professional they use in order to respond appropriately. So we tested the water in the drinking fountains, and we had one that tested one for lead? Yeah, this was last year. And uh, they immediately took it offline and got it done. But what that did was it led to uh, further inspections, and now they're saying, you know, well, pay attention to this and this and give us an extra test every month and but that sort of thing. Do they, do they have an idea where the lead came from? The drinking fountain. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. Is it from pipes, or? it's from the well, it's from the piping, what, what's... Uh, no, I, I, I don't think so. A, a lot of uh, drinking, a lot of old <clears throat> drinking fountains contained lead. Okay, so it was, uh, the, it was the fixture itself, uh, that, maybe? Um, I'm not an expert, but it's certainly possible. In any case, it's not there anymore. Did, so, did, did it has get, been addressed. Did we get a recommendation from the water quality professional who was looking at this? A recommendation? All right, so it, it says, so I have let them know and worked with the water quality professional they use in order to respond appropriately. Yes. Did, did, did he or she have any recommendation? That the water quality profession. Well, there. Did they replace the water fountain? Oh, that was done last year. Yeah. And, and yeah. Oh, okay. No, yeah. and, and now it's okay. That's, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, yeah. That, All right. That, that, that's that's what I thought you wanted. Last to say. year's issue is last year's issue. This okay. year's issue yeah. is that we got inspected. Yeah. And now we have to jump through a few more hoops. Okay. While and, you're talking about jumping yeah. through those hoops, I had a quite a conversation with Ken Lamont about it the other day. 
Bruce they got Ken involved with it because he does the plumbing at the school and stuff. Um, they want to be able to, they want us to replace the pump, mm -hmm. right? The, the well pump. Eventually. The well pump. And perhaps even the uh, tank itself. Either the tank, have the tank cleaner, cleaned or replaced. Yes. And Ken suggested to me, which I'm bringing to you, would be when you do this paperwork with the state, you should better make sure that whatever we have to do if it comes to the replacing these items or, or cleaning with something, that it's not done until the month of August. Yeah. I, because I, I, that's I, when the school's not being used only. I, I'm, I've talked with Bruce about that. Because um, Ken and, said and you have to state that in your they'll They'll want you to do it sooner. It's only a recommendation at this oh. point. It's not a requirement. Well, so, guess what happens to recommendations? Are so Bruce and... Uh, this fellow Michael are going to be in close DEP contact. He made a recommendation to us at the store. So and and two months later they they changed and they want want to make a law. So be prepared. Well, then I, <laughs> look, I look forward to the Conway Grammar School's capital requests for fiscal year 2019. So, did did Ken agree with the state's? Request I that it should be done. Or he agreed or not, he didn't say that. Well, it is a recommendation. Yeah, based recommendation. on its age and the average age. Not because of there was the tanks in the pump. I, no, I no, see, no. I this is this this is entirely a separate issue. Yeah, it it just the age and mm -hmm. you know. DP like things new and shiny at all times. I guess. Well, it's over 25 years yeah. old, and they say it's due to be replaced, and so. It's and Bruce does a great job maintaining old things. Uh, we're really lucky that he's there. Yeah. yeah. Um, MEMA has approved our grant proposal for Delabar Avenue, and it is and is including it in their package application to FEMA, who nice. would actually fund it. If last year is a good guide, we should hear in about three months whether we get the grant. Plenty of time to get an article for the 25% matching funds, some of which can be an in kind contributions into an article for town meeting. Good. Uh, so that's good. That was a great relief to get that uh, done. We had to go mm -hmm. back and forth with them several times on that, and we got it in right. by the deadline, and yeah. they, uh, they included it. So, you know, it's coming with the state recommendation. Well, it did last year, too, right. and MEMA didn't understand why FEMA didn't approve it. Some of it was that it requested engineering work, but engineering work is one of the things that the grant is for. Mm -hmm. So there was some miscommunication on that. Anyway, we've completed that engineering work, so they can't use that against us now. So we're hoping that it'll be approved this time. Okay. Um, I already talked about the uh, Massachusetts yep. Office on Disability grant. Um, as a follow-up to the town meeting vote approving non-criminal dispositions of violations of the town's bylaws, and thanks to Lisa's persistence, we have somewhere on my desk Oh, look, tickets. <laughs> we tickets. now have tickets for Can the. Can anybody give out tickets? For the non. Well, who we'll gives them out uh -huh. today? The police. <sighs> we used to have tickets like uh, that when I was a teacher. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> so these are tickets for the non criminal disposition uh -huh. of the violation of the town bylaws. In triplicate. Triplicate. Oh, Great oh. job, Lisa. <laughs> Yay. Um, I believe that as part of a general review of bylaws, we should consider refining the amounts charged as the baseline of $50 for the first offense, $100 for the second offense, and $150 for the third offense may be more appropriate for some offenses than for others. Of course, we also trust the police in their discretion, but we should not be overly cautious in employing these tickets, so, which so we might be if they were that much money. So what are these tickets for? Any violation of town bylaws. Any violation of town bylaws. Yes. Somebody gets parked okay. their car on the side of the highway. Okay. Then yeah. a snowstorm. Right. So, so it's parking. It's dogs. 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 Mm -hmm. What else? Anything that's in the bylaws. If you're in violation, you potentially get one of these. So the idea is, I think that the police wave them in your face and say, "That's fifty dollars if you don't stop doing that right now." 
Um, are we going to have a, a, a punch list for the for our police to know what what they should be looking for? Well, well we should. again, I think we trust mm -hmm. them in their discretion. But one of the reasons I think we should look at the amounts we're charging is that some offenses may but require the fifty hundred and but 150 the police and officers aren't not. familiar with our town bylaws. Yeah. Well. So. So I, this that's is a, not such a bad idea. This yeah, we, we, this we, is a good, yeah. this is a good training. Do, do, we, do we have anything for a warning on there? Mm -hmm. No. No. No, the warning is the warning is comes up before to the, the discretion ticket? of I the see. police officer. Okay. Yes. So that's between the police officer and the individual before a ticket is written. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is up to their, always up to their discretion. Okay. All right. So, so there's no warning check box or something on this ticket. No, not on this ticket. No, this is this is a template that came. Um, this is a standard template. I'll put it yeah. that way. Okay. For the for this, this kind is of. This approved thing. by the district court. It, it's their standard form. That's for good enough. Good enough for us. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, we'll just we'll be able to get very well. significant revenue from this. <laughs> I <over>. hope not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next item. Concerns of the selectmen. No, I concerns? Got I got one, yes. Okay. This is basically for Tom more than us itself. But during our uh, rag shake parade, we form at the Machata Hall in the street, middle of the street. We had a trial. I, I was unaware to me that Directly across the street from the Sonic Hall, in that common area, there's an old-fashioned water fountain monument. From the women's common? Yes. Tem Christian temperance. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's the one. On the back side of it is a cement basin about this square. It goes down on the ground. Where evidently they, there was a place they allowed the horses to water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A child fell in that mm. in the deck. Hmm. So it's, it's a drop off about this high. So okay. what I'm suggesting to have you have the highway superintendent go have him put something over that to fill bring it in. ground level. Yeah, we could fill it with bricks or right something. Right now it's got a yeah. fire department orange corner in it because I put it in that night because a parent came to me and said, hey Bob, my child just died. Did you know they're about this whole I goes, no, I didn't. Yeah. How, how old was the child? Uh, probably five years old. Five to six years old. Okay. They're okay. Anyway, they didn't get hurt. They only fell about yeah. this far. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's, yeah. it's so. just something mm -hmm. that if somebody happens to be standing on the camera in the dark, they ain't gonna yeah. see it. They're probably breaking ink on They stepped mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. So you well, could well, just well, put yeah. a flat cover over it, make it ground or, level, or or bring it bring it up to bricks or something. Yeah. Because it's even it's even with the ground right now, but it's it's yeah. recessed, you know, down the yeah, ground, yeah. on the ground there. So you just yeah. fill it up with something, bring it up ground level. Well, I haven't seen too many thirsty horses in the area. No, that's, that's exactly so what I was going to say. I haven't seen any <laughs> horses <laughs> uh, drinking out of it. So Probably I, some, I some historical person reason. may not want you to tamper with that because that's the way it was designed. Well, the state went well. through and turned off all of the wells that used to put water into all of the horse watering troughs around. Well, when I did so. the intersection over of Shelton Falls Road there, it was from Sonic a lot years ago. We found the pipe that came down the hill from that. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. running water. Yeah. I have no idea where it came yeah. from, but it went to that line here. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Maybe it came from the old town. Came well. down from up Baptist Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. came down yeah. the side of the road. Could have, could have come from so way, up, way up. Where? Up there's a spring. Up. There's a bunch okay. of springs up there. So. Yeah. That's my only concern. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Any other concerns? No. Okay. Um, mail. Let's see. We got, we got mail from. Um, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and it's from um, Linda Dunleavy, the executive director, and she's just giving us a list of things that we need to consider uh, for uh, to be in line with uh, recreational marijuana and what we need to do if we want to put a moratorium up. So we've already done that. Mm -hmm. And you have a copy of this, right, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Okay, any announcements? No announcements. Okay, next meeting is scheduled for Monday, November 27, um, here in the town offices at 6 o'clock. 
Any other business to come before the board? No, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank Happy you, Alyssa. Thanksgiving to everyone. Yes. That's right. Thanksgiving is next week. Next this week. is crazy. Right. How did it get, get here so fast? Because <laughs> summer was so... Uh...